Are you trying to establish your brand as a thought leader? Start a podcast, invite industry experts to be guests on your show, and watch your brand become the prime resource for decision makers in your industry. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. This is another behind the curtains episode, except instead of myself, James Carberry, uh, and, and Logan on the show, we're actually introducing you to another person on the Sweetfish team. This is actually our longest standing team member. Uh, his name is Ryan Drotty. He is our director of customer experience, and he has been with me since probably... I don't know, maybe two or three months after I started Sweetfish back long before we were even before we were doing podcasts. So Ryan, how are you doing today, man? Hey, man. Yeah, I don't know what that says that I've been with you the longest, but you haven't featured me on this show at all. So, uh, <laughs> man, you're just keeping me hidden in the I, shadows. I, yeah, I'm but, keeping you in the basement, man. I've, I've got the <laughs> lock on the door and uh, we, we only let you come out every three and a half years. So so here so you are. This is, this is my one chance. <laughs> got to make it. Got to make it. So, so, so one thing, Ryan, that I've always admired about you is your passion for your faith, your passion for your family, really your passion for making an impact in the world. And for the last couple of years, you have, uh, maybe it's even been more than a couple of years, you've been uh, serving with a nonprofit, you've been traveling you know, to different parts of the world, serving with this nonprofit. And it's all centric around this massive problem in our world today uh, that you're actually taking action to try to end. And that problem is human trafficking. It's something that yeah. I would imagine anybody listening to this you know, has heard people talk about it, uh, but they might not know exactly what it is or the depth to which you know the problem exists. Can you spend a little bit of time because uh, we're going to be talking about you know three ways that that companies can kind of step in and, and help end this problem? But before we do that, kind of give give us some context, Ryan, as to what the problem is and and what your involvement with it has been up to this point in trying to stop it. Sure. Yeah. Actually, what's amazing is we're not that far from move removed from uh, people not knowing anything about really? this. Yeah. is as far as we have come in fighting it. But um, I would still say that most people have some basic entry-level knowledge of what human trafficking is. But when I help go around and, and give some presentations on it and stuff, it's amazing the the depth of like people not knowing the extent of this. Um, so, But mm. my, my involvement has been, it's actually been a, a little more than a couple of years, so roughly four years, I believe. I've been volunteering with uh, an organization called Love 146 which specifically deals in child trafficking. And I'm part of a volunteer team here in Central Florida. And we've mostly focused on raising awareness in our community and working with some other local nonprofits, which I'll get into a few of those later here. But um, that's been my involvement. And like you said, I want to, since I described that uh, the level of knowledge on human trafficking is not as broad as it needs to be, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll set the stage a little bit on, on what it is. So this definition is from the Department of Homeland Security, and that is that human trafficking is modern day slavery and involves the use of force, fraud, or coercion to obtain some kind of labor or commercial sex act. So those three words you'll hear again and again anytime you research this, force, fraud, or coercion. Those are the three types of um, initiating victims into this, which, you know, we could go on 
into those yeah. in, in some other time. But so there were a couple of years ago in 2016, it was estimated that there were more than 40 million people victims of modern slavery. Um, <sighs> that is the most at any time, at any point in human history. And also that one in four of those were children, which is what Love 146 deals in specifically. Now that number every year grows and it's not because more people are enslaved. It's just that we are becoming more and more aware of the extent of the problem and we're more able to encompass uh, the, the people who are actually victims of this. So this is happening, Ryan, because I, I, uh, I know when I first got exposed to the problem, I kind of had in my head like, oh, this is happening in different parts of the world. And it was yeah, Southeast it was, Asia. Yeah, yeah it, it, was, it was easy. It was easy to kind of be a little bit more blind to it just because I assumed it was happening everywhere else, but not here. But it's actually happening in our own backyard. Like I know Atlanta is, is a massive area here in the, in the States uh, for this. Can you speak to that a little bit? Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere across the world and everywhere in the United States. And it, it defies all types of barriers, men, women, and children are trafficked. It defies socioeconomic statuses. Orlando actually, well, Florida itself is the third highest state um, as far as uh, trafficking reported cases go. So in Orlando is a major, which where we live is a major part of that in the I-4 corridor. Uh, the reason being, I mean, I won't get too much into it, but it's a, it's a touristy area. So you have a lot of people coming in from around the world, uh, people who want to enjoy their vacations and mm-hmm. often are coming alone. And so, you know, it's an opportunity for them to buy. Well, I, I'm specifically talking about the sex trafficking side of things. It's an opportunity for them to, quote unquote, enjoy their vacations in privacy and taking advantage of, of children and women and men yeah. uh, in that regard. So, yeah, so it's happening everywhere. Um, it Traffickers prey on uh, a variety of things in victims, you know, psychological, emotional vulnerability, economic hardship. Uh, those that have a lack of a social safety net, or if there's any kind of political instability going on, there are all kinds of reasons. This blew me away a couple of years ago. There is actually a book that was published by a trafficker, which is also known as a pimp, which by the way, that word pimp, which is just a side note, personal thing. I'm really not a fan of that. People that use that in kind of like a just offhand way, because yeah. it, it, it literally is a trafficker. That is what a pimp is. Uh, but I won't get into that. But so there is, there's a book published on how to identify victims and mm. how to recruit victims and what the most successful strategies are for that. And people have read it and put this into effect and it's amazing. But um, oh yeah, one of the more complex things about it too is that it's a, it's a hidden crime that victims rarely come forward to seek help for. It's a complex set of emotions. Many victims don't even see themselves as victims. And that's one of the most common misconceptions is that, you know, when victims are rescued, they're going to thank their rescuers immediately. Like, thank you so much for rescuing me from this situation. There's such a psychological bond with their, uh, with their traffickers, though, that often, you know, they will return. If they're not put into certain situations, they'll return immediately to uh, the situation in which they came. Wow. So, and then the last thing I'll mention is just, it's, it's maybe the saddest thing of all, but it's estimated that fewer than 1% of victims are actually rescued at this mm. time. So, so it's heavy stuff, but yeah. this is the reality that we're living in. And this is, this is why it matters. This yeah. is why we need to look at it straight yeah. on. So, so Ryan, talk to us about, because uh, we've been talking about this a little bit leading up to this, but talk to us why you think, you know, businesses, you know, obviously for this show, B two B companies listening to this, why do they need to get involved in this? Yeah, I think the short answer is because they have power and resources, mm. uh, especially you know, I, I can speak most familiarly to businesses here where we are in the U.S. Yeah, but um, but as far as why why trafficking out of the good many causes. Obviously, there are hundreds of incredible causes out there. This is not the only one that you should be concerned about. It's one that matters a lot to me. But as I've thought about this, uh, I think from a branding perspective, there are a couple of benefits to getting involved in human trafficking. And it's it's a major human rights issue. But on the other hand, it's safe. It's a bipartisan issue. So all political parties are in agreement on this. There is no one 
outside of those in the industry itself who thinks that human trafficking is a good thing. If you listen to a lot of the political, uh, there's not even necessarily debate on this. The conversation is in agreement. Yeah. Anyone you listen to is fighting for this. So, so if you're looking to do good or associate your brand with social justice, I think this is a strong step towards doing that. And yet, like I said, it's not a risky move. Yeah. So as much yeah. as I believe, you know, that this should be an important issue to all of us as human beings too. I don't really care if you end up aligning your brand with the issue selfishly or inauthentically. I'm sure a bunch of people would disagree with me on that. But in my mind, you know, as long as children are being rescued and men and women are regaining freedom over their own choices, like uh, as long as this, the Pope called it a plague on humanity, which I think is strong but accurate. As long as we're moving towards this becoming eradicated, I, I, I don't care the motivations. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I love that you spelled it out that way, Ryan. So so I want to dive into the three things that companies can specifically do. The first one that you and I uh, talked about offline uh, is educating yourself. This is obviously something that you spend a lot of time here in Central Florida, you mm-hmm. know, doing talks and, and you're educating folks. But what does it look like for a company that decides, hey, I want to get involved in ending this problem? What can they start doing to educate themselves? Right. So one thing I'd like to mention real quick is that, uh, like I said, there are kind of two sides to trafficking. There's sex trafficking and labor trafficking. Uh, The one that I'm most familiar with is sex trafficking, but obviously uh, labor trafficking, in fact, is much more common across the world and is a major problem as well and is much more relevant to a lot of businesses. So I'll just mention that and say that I'm not going to go into that because it's not necessarily my area of expertise. But there are tools out there where you can uh, identify your supply chain, the slavery points along that supply chain. There's a a website called slaveryfootprint.org. A lot of people have heard of that. Uh, Check it out. But beyond that, yeah, I think to leaders individually, I think it's first important to educate yourself before you're doing anything as a company. And one of the reasons for that is that one, you could actually make things worse if you act without understanding the issue. And there's a ton of resources out there for you to look up. So it doesn't even make sense for you kind of to move forward without doing that. For instance, you know, I described not knowing that uh, the psychological state of, of victims, if you were to get involved in this somehow and not understand what it takes to fully reintegrate a victim or a survivor into society, then you're going to do a lot of damage. A lot of people who get into this want to immediately go and kick down doors and brothels and things like that. Uh, That's not the way to do it, though. Uh, Mm -hmm. In fact, that's not most of our jobs to do that at any point. It's the job of law enforcement. So that's that's an example of why personally you should educate yourself. But I, you know, also I think as with anything, you know, adopt this yourself before you push it out to your team. But there are all kinds of resources out there. One of the most common ones is Polaris Project. And I was reading their website. I'll put links to all this in the show notes because I have access to that. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I thought a lot of B2B folks would geek out over the first line on their website. It says, Polaris uses data-driven strategies to prevent (laughs) disrupt human trafficking. Data-driven and disrupt in the same tagline? Yes. That is a B2B marketer's dream. Beautiful. Yes, it's pretty cool, actually. They, They just... One of the big things they do is come out with huge like studies of uh, just data, state specific data for uh, you know calls into human trafficking hotlines and cases and you know demographics and things like that. It's really interesting. But there's International Justice Mission IJM for a faith based bent if that's the direction you want to go. Uh, the one that I'm involved with is Love 146, which like I said focuses specifically on uh, child trafficking. I think you should also know the signs of trafficking if you work in any kind of service or hospitality industry. Uh, There's a list, and I'll link to that, of just a number of common signs of of victims. And no one of them means that trafficking is occurring, but if several of them are, there's a good chance that there's something more going on. And you might want to reach out to a hotline number, which I'll get to again here in a minute. Um, Also, and it's not just if you work in those industries. I think if you travel a lot, 
because one of the most common places where sex trafficking specifically occurs is in hotels. And that's why we try to train up hotel staff. But also, if you're in any kind of business and you travel a lot, which is going to be a lot of people who are listening to this, you can make a difference by simply knowing what to look for when, when things look off. You know, I read a story the other day, I didn't plan on bringing this to the table, but I read a story about this guy in India who was on a train who noticed that there were, you know, 13 or 14 young preteen girls who were looking out of sorts, who were looking, you know, kept their eyes downcast and there was just something off about it. And he tweeted at the, like a train station who kind of forwarded it to law enforcement and they ended up arresting three traffickers that day and rescuing, you know, like a dozen young girls simply because he noticed something. So that's a perfect example of why we need to do this. Um, Yeah, that's the first one. Educate yourself. I love it. So once leaders have educated themselves, even if you're not a leader in your organization, I think, I I think everybody listening to this should, should educate themselves. The next step the next thing that companies can do is is to give money and resources. Talk to us about this one. Oh, everybody wants to hear that, right? Give your money away. Yep. <laughs> um, so everybody says this, right? I mean, you you're you're fighting for a cause. Give money, give money away, give money. But I think what I want to do is is talk about some of the need as an example around here, so you can see why organizations need the money that's generated from from awesome businesses. There's an organization around here called Samaritan Village in Central Florida that we partner with. They are a survivor care facility. So basically, when women are rescued, sometimes they go to emergency shelters, but they can't stay there for long. And so if they want to uh, go anywhere after the emergency shelter, they need to go to a place like Samaritan Village. Well, they'll, they'll stay for a year or two, I think, the program. And basically, they go through intense counseling and are cared for in a very safe environment. So they're able to kind of debrief all of the trauma that they've experienced and then go out into the world. Now, so it's a a critical service, right? So there are 10 beds uh, for that type of service in the entire state of Florida. Samaritan Village has six of those beds uh, at least a year or two ago. You know, the numbers may have updated since then. But do you want to know how many reported cases of girls and women being trafficked there were last year? Mm -hmm. I do and I don't, but tell us. (laughs) 504. Wow. 504 <laughs> girls and women were reported as being trafficked last year. Oh and there gosh. are 10 beds for them in the state of Florida. Oh my God. At least there were as of one or two years ago, like I said. And so the rest of those girls and women, if they needed a place to go long term, which, as I said before, because a lot of the psychological bonds, you know, if you release them out back to their families or back to, you know, to just fend for themselves, they're going to return to the lifestyle that they came from. There are only 10 beds for them available. And so Samaritan Village, as an example, has you know a, a gala event, a fundraiser each year where they invite donors to come. So attending something like that, you can literally increase the available opportunity for, for some organization like that to add beds through money, just money. So that's why I give that an example. And if you're near an urban area, I can guarantee you that there are organizations that have been fighting, you know, working to fight this for some time. And I highly recommend not going rogue on this and doing something about it within your organization alone, but partner with who's around you. Yeah. As a side note, individually, anyone can get involved too. Your skills and your hobbies can be adapted to directly make a difference, even Mm -hmm. if you're not a law enforcement officer. So, I mean, just a quick example was. I've done work in Cambodia and there is there was someone there who was great at making cupcakes, right? So he's like, well, I'm passionate about this. What can I do? All I do is make cupcakes. He ended up starting a business where he primarily employs survivors of trafficking. And so after they go through a program similar to Samaritan Village, you know, and they need employment to continue, he looks to hire those women uh, and his skill set was making cupcakes. That's an extreme example. And not everyone is going to leave their jobs to do something like that. But I just wanted to kind of paint the picture that whatever your anyone skill can get involved. Is, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I love that. <clears throat> this third one that we're going to talk about, Ryan, and, and we'll close down with this one, uh, is to empower your employees, empower your team. Talk to us about this one. Yeah. So culture's hot right now. It has been for a while in B2B, right? As it should be. 
if you do any kind of team outings or mandatory volunteering, I know a lot of companies will do, I would just say consider orienting it around fighting trafficking if that's mm-hmm. something that you're passionate about. There are lots of ways to do this. Uh, you know, simply having an education day or something like that is an example. But here are a few other easy examples of ways to do this. One, you might not think of this, but run a 5K together. Mm. So I'm part of a volunteer team here, like I said, and we're putting on uh, our second annual race. It's called the Abolitionist 5K. It's coming up in October. Uh, It's right here in Central Florida, but anyone can sign up anywhere and run a 5K right where they are. We call it a virtual 5K. Mm. So I'll, I'll share the link to that if that's something that, you know, you can get your entire team around for a weekend or for just a day to get together, run a 5K, you know, give money to a great cause. There are plenty of virtual races like ours as well that you can join. Or if there's something happening locally, do that. I know that lots of organizations will do bowling events and things like that. There's, those are easy, easy yeah. ways to get involved in this and fun ways and team building, you know, yeah. methods as well. Yeah. So, and then the last one that I'll give, I've got a book for you. So if you're big on reading and having your team, you know, read books together, please, please pick this one. It's called Girls Like Us by Rachel mm. Lloyd. Now, Rachel Lloyd uh, runs a nonprofit in New York. It's called Gems. She is a survivor herself. She was, when she was younger, trafficked in Europe, and her story is incredible. And she, I will say this, I went into this book not expecting much. I completely went in with a mindset that this is a survivor of trafficking. This is probably going to be a book that's not necessarily well-written, but is probably a good story and all that type of thing. She's brilliant. Wow. She weaves her story in so it's it's very real while also weaving in larger issues and facts about trafficking across Mm -hmm. the world and it is i think the perfect resource for getting your feet wet and all this so if you like you know assigning reading that isn't directly necessarily related to you know leadership and business and all that please do this you know great suggestion Yeah. (laughs) yeah totally so so organizing 5ks you know, reading books like Girls Like Us. Are there are there other things, Ryan, that teams can be doing to empower their employees to kind of rally around this issue? Yeah, I mean, there are plenty of things, like I said. The only other one that comes to mind immediately for me is to literally just bring someone in to train your team, mm. um, especially if you're in an industry where you directly need to be, uh, need to have your eyes open on this. Mm -hmm. I know that, for example, like people in healthcare, they're now rolling out where it's mandatory, where teams are being trained, which is fantastic for me to hear that they have to be trained in some way with with human trafficking training. It's not a very well-defined program right now. So lots of different organizations can do it. Uh, The one that I volunteer for, Love146, I know they do trainings. That's love146.org. I'm not as familiar with others, but I, I am positive that there are all kinds of different organizations who would be willing to bring in their leadership or their teaching teams and share with your teams, you know, about what they can do and how they can yep. understand the issue better. So I love it. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for, for coming on and talking about a topic that is not fun, but is absolutely necessary and raising awareness with the you know, thousands of folks that will listen to this episode. Uh, I really appreciate your time. If there's somebody listening to this, they want to learn more, they want to stay connected with you. Uh, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Two ways. One, you can email me if you have any questions about this, and that is ryan at sweetfishmedia.com. And I would also encourage you to go to abolitionist5k.com. Check it out. Sign up for the virtual race. Uh, It's going to be fun. And there's lots of information on that site as well about the issue. So, Awesome, my man. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I will talk to you very soon. All right. All right. Later, brother. Becoming a thought leader doesn't just happen. If you want to build a strong personal brand and extend your reach online and offline, you need a plan. Want help developing yours? Check out Impact Summit. This one-day event is bringing together best-selling authors, professional athletes, influential CEOs, and emerging entrepreneurs, all for one purpose, to equip you to lead, influence, and inspire. Whether you're looking to build a lasting legacy with your business or extend the reach of your brand, 
Impact Summit speakers will share inspiring stories and practical lessons to help you on your way. Did we mention a session on launching and growing a podcast? You guessed it. You'll hear from Sweetfish Media's own James Carberry during that session. You won't want to miss all of these influencers and leaders coming together in Salt Lake City on October 13th. Ready to learn more? Check out influencerinc.co slash impact summit. B2B growth listeners can get 15% off the price of their tickets for this event by using the promo code SWEETFISH, S-W-E-E-T-F-I-S-H. So use that code, get your tickets today, and get ready to grow your brand and your influence at Impact Summit 2018.